Hi guys, it's Legend Arma TV. It's great to see you. New patch day, and uh, version 2.74 brings a lot of stuff here. However, if you think about it just for a second, we ain't getting content, pretty much. However, even though we're not getting content, we're still getting a lot of interesting stuff that are quite huge. They have quite an impact on the game, so... In today's video, we're gonna go through all the stuff briefly, briefly, and uh, see what's up. Please enjoy. All right, patch notes, let's go. So, first things first, character balance adjustments. And one of the most huge things about this update, and it will frustrate a lot of people, I know, uh, it's... it's quite crazy. The true frames are being removed. So, the true iframe, true frame, or just uh, invincibility frames, you name it, are being removed from all the characters. So the skills that you used to be able to dodge red attacks, which are unavoidable, undodgeable, unblockable, you could do that with the uh, true frame skills and not receive the damage or get KO'd. These are no longer there. They are removed. So consult with the uh, character list of abilities uh, that they had for the true iframes. So if you played uh, Spell Sword Orisha, that would be a Rune Blade. Uh, and for Whip, it was Capriccio, it was Accentato, 20 stacks, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, shield, ba shield Charge for Fiona. So a lot of people are now going to suffer uh, because of that, because I know a lot of people have been using the true frames to dodge Nemain's uh, Gates of Babylon, right? So... This is huge. These are no longer grant you invincibility, so you will have to adjust. Uh, and uh, it's justified. It's justified because you're not supposed to dodge or block unblockable attacks, right? You're supposed to just run away from them or just avoid them as much as possible. So um, I think it's it's give or take here, honestly. I, I know there is going to be a, a huge a discussion about it. Uh, some people would probably be up for this idea, for this idea. Uh, some people would be against, but uh, it's there and we will have to uh, just, you know, just accept it. Next up, uh, character rebalance uh, is coming, so a lot of uh, characters getting nerfed, a lot of characters getting buffed. Uh, briefly, uh, land twin swords uh, buffs, uh, most of them, I think all of them, there's buffs for Twin Swords. For Twin Spears, just minor buffs here. Uh, Fiona Longsword buffs. Uh, Eevee Staff uh, partially buffs. Also a little uh, nerf to the active regeneration cooldown. It's going to take uh, much longer, I think. Uh, Karok bo uh, Battle Pillar, uh, a little buff. But mo most of these buffs are coming to the dodges, because since the true frame has been removed, uh, all the dodges, dashes are getting buffed, so you receive like longer frames, longer iframes for them. Kaibo, uh, a buff here, also a buff for crossgun Kai, however, uh, active hunter's uh, party, which granted for whole party, they, it granted SP, is now nerfed, is now 8%, uh, max SP gain is now 8% for party members, <clears throat> so it's a uh, it's a nerf for party members, not for the crossgun though himself. Uh, the caster's SP gain remains unchanged, so it's it's all right. Uh, Vela twin swords, a little uh, buff here. Twin chain blades buffs to the glint, so um, you, you're gonna be a cart wheeling even more, uh, even even better now. It's good. Huge buff to Herg Tade. Uh, it's like it's really huge. He gets a deflection that's going to be used a lot. So uh, this uh, class is getting there. It's getting there. It's moving up on the tier list for sure. Linglave little buffs here. Uh, same for Battle Shade. Uh, Spell Sword Arisha. Now, Spell Sword Arisha is dear to my heart because I main that. And for those of you who are uh, trying to figure out, is it a nerf or is it a buff? It's really hard to say right now. Um... But I want you to know that most of the stuff that Spell Sword Arisha is getting is actually really good, and especially really good for new players. So, changed MP and or mana. Uh, some can no longer exceed 500. So, how was it before? You have true mana, you have stored mana. You could have yourself 500 true mana, and you could also uh, keep on stacking, farming that stored mana that you wouldn't see, but it would be there. 
It was really, it was used a lot in Season 4. Uh, you could stack it before the battle and then just utilize it. No more. So it doesn't exceed 500 any longer. So if you have 400 uh, true mana and 100 stored mana, if you keep on attacking, the stored mana ain't gonna go uh, higher than, you know, 500. It's not gonna exceed it. So uh, no longer extra mana that was uh, invisible that you didn't see. I'm going to cover it up in a separate video. Uh, I'm going to have a, um, a Spell Sword Arisha guide update uh, that is going <clears> to <throat> be coming uh, quite soon. Uh, the counter drain um, change is now uh, before if you did it and you didn't score a counter hit with it, uh, you would only get like some portion of stored mana and 100 uh, mana on successful counter. Now it's uh, you get, uh, where is it? Uh, you get 50 MP upon use and 50 MP upon successful counterattacks. Basically, it didn't change much. Um, I would say you would want to score uh, counterattacks with a counter drain more often now for maximum profit, but it's not that big of a deal, so I wouldn't really uh, worry about it much. Diffusion warp damage has been decreased by 5%. It's uh, a little convenience, minor convenience here. It sucks. However, the Diffusion's Warp attack hitbox now has been better reach on monster with unusual shapes. And uh, it happened a lot for Diffusion Warp, uh, so I think it kind of balances out the negative 5% damage decrease. Uh, just think about it for a second. Uh, Spellsword Orisha has been almost a god tier uh, character. She's been so strong, it's just insane. These, uh, these little nerfs are justified pretty much, but it doesn't really affect Arisha, the Spell Sword Arisha that much, so I wouldn't really worry about it. It's not that big of a deal. Don't freak out, please. Uh, also, huge change to the Ruin Blade. Now, first of all, uh, it's not easy to be cancelled by enemy attacks anymore, so you're gaining like kind of like a super armor, so you're not going to get flinched while you're inputting your inputs for the Ruin Blade Stage 1. It's really good. Um, <clears throat> the activation command for the enhanced attack has been simplified to up, down, left, right. So if you remember, uh, Spell Sword is uh, the most dreadful combo that actually turned off a lot of new players that wanted to pick Arisha was the Rune Blade combo, which was W S A D A D S W, right? Or W S, whatever. Now it's simplified. It's only W S A D. And you get the first freaking stage uh, of Ruin Blade easy. So it's uh, going to be way more um, comfortable for the new players who's going to be picking Arishim. Uh, it's going to take just a little bit of time for the veteran players to uh, get used to it, that the input is not that big. The second and third stage uh, of Ruin Blade remain uh, the same, so A S D S A S D S W and then S W or A D. So it's the first thing that uh, the first stage that's been really nerfed big time uh, to make it more simple for the new players. It's really good. It's it's awesome. Changed active resonance to receive the below adjustments. So huge, huge here. No longer be knocked down by most attacks. So you gain super armor during uh, active resonance. However, you would still want to score uh, perfect resonances, right? And if you don't know what that is, uh, just consult with the Arisha guide. It's really huge. That means you can now YOLO resonances or actually uh, have your uh, perfect resonances guaranteed. So it's huge. It's really good. Uh, however, your defense gets lowered by 20% while you're casting it, so you'll have to uh, be vigilant here. You know, you, you still have a little risk here to receiving a lot of damage. And you can now cancel the resonance with a Diffusion Shift, which is the dash, or Mana Drain, which is the block. Uh, SP will not be returned, however, but uh, it's really good. Sometimes you can you can cancel it. I don't know who, who would want to, but it, it's still nice that it's there. Right? So that's about it. Arisha Spell Whip. Uh, huge nerfs to Spell Whip. Uh, String Gendal Strike damage reduced by 12%. Accentatus damage reduced by 20, uh, 12%. Uh, while String Gendal Strike is not really used a lot, uh, it usually is used to proc Calm. It's still a damage loss, right? Because you, you use it quite often. 
Exentato's damage, which is the finisher, 12% damage is huge. Uh, however, Spell Whip was super strong as well, so um, this nerf is probably justified, I'm not quite sure. So, uh, and um, honestly, I think um, it's a little bit too harsh, a little bit, but um, we will have to see. I think Spell Whip is still going to do some really decent damage, even after that nerf. Uh, Brothers Rush stack icon um, changed from a different color when you're at 20 stacks, that's good. And Mana Shock stam uh, Stamina Cost Penalties after using Prestissimo, which is the double dash, has been removed. So you can now do the double dashes without the penalty. However, uh, Spell Whip Arisha, especially when you have the Coleman Chan Scroll, she doesn't have stamina issues at all. No stamina, you just don't care about it, thanks to Inspiration. Um, a little buffs to Silas, however, the Illusion Shields cooldown has been uh, increased, so uh, we're going to be receiving less healing through the battle. Miri, uh, you can now dodge animated attacks via Hot Streak without inputting a movement key. So, uh, as far as I know, uh, if Venerator is going to watch this video, he's a huge uh, Miri nerd, she gets a neutral dodge, right? That you didn't have, like so. You just press the ta uh, press the space button and you dodge. You couldn't do that before. I guess now you can do that. Ira right, changed active chaos warp now cost 150 SP, so um, less SP because the true frame has been removed from it. Huge nerf to Bell, deforestation damage uh, decrease, uh, landslide damage decrease. Also, the uh, perfectly timed attacks is now 20% instead of 30%. Uh, Rushing River uses stamina now. It's uh, it's big, and a lot of Bell's been dreading about that, but it happened. Also, some character balance adjustments to PvP. You can read them over here. Um, PvP do exist, so those who are interested in it, you might want to consult with these. Next up, Path Transformation. Now, basically, there is a lot of texting here. Um, overall, Overall, what happened? So, first of all, the hit drag that was uh, implemented into transformation uh, passively, right? So whenever you're trans, you gain extra hit drag. It's been removed. And now it went to two different uh, skills, and you will have to choose one of them. One of the skills increases your additional damage and whenever you're trans. And the other one increases your impact SPD, which is hit drag, which allows you to, um, you know, penetrate uh, the boss uh, faster. So basically, you will have to choose between either you want to go additional damage, receive additional damage whenever you trans, or you want to have the hit drag effect better. I'm pretty sure that Lance and Battleshade Lens uh, would want to grab the impact SPD. All the other characters, most of them, would want to get additional damage. More additional damage, more multiplier damage, uh, more damage you do, right? So uh, basically, two new skills here. Also, uh, the below skills do no longer cost SP, which is Purging Light, Sacred Sword, Prison of Destruction, Punishment, which was all the actives that uh, the um, uh, transformation had, both Paladin and Dark Knight. So, uh, the biggest the biggest change here is basically uh, new skills, and you only can choose one of them. So, you would have to uh, think about it. What do you want to choose? Uh, yeah, the, the ranks here, how much additional damage you gain... Uh, so uh, whenever it's maxed, it's 100% uh, hit drag, or you get 1,600 additional damage. So uh, be advised, what do you want to pick? That's about it. Changes and balance adjustments for battles and raids. So the dualness status uh, has been adjusted. It's been changed. Uh, that is Titan in Royal Army uh, Ancient uh, Giant. Uh, basically, whenever he would step on you, right... I know, it sounds kinky, but whenever he steps on you, you would lose all your critical for, what, like, for, like, a minute or something? So you would, wouldn't would score criticals at all. Now, the debuff boosts stamina cost and inflicts critical minus three only for 20 seconds. So it's, uh, Titan is probably now the best freaking royal army to farm uh, whenever he's on. Some adjustments to Chrome Crook, uh, not that big of a deal. Uh, this, uh, armor can no longer be destroyed when taking hits in personal training sites. The training sites haven't been... Uh, there is nothing being said about the training sites, which is the target dummy. So I'm not sure if it's going to be in the patch or not. Uh, we will have to see. Uh, some changes, it's not that big of a deal here. Uh, revamp raid battles. So what happened here? Uh, stuns and knockdowns from suppression skills are still active, however, 
uh, the uh, knockdown from accumulated damage would, will not longer occur for raid bosses. So sometimes you would see the boss just kneeling or just dropping down, getting a, a temporarily stunned. Uh, that's not going to happen anymore. Uh, they said that you guys are already killing bosses quite fast, so uh, we're removing that. So they, <clears throat> you will have to fight the boss even more. And this applies to pretty much all the raids, from Dulahan to Siet. Here. Also changed uh, most of the uh, patterns for pretty much every boss, Arcana, Maka, Agaris, Lulamfada. Basically, um, most of the stuff here related to damage reduction to some of the stuff that they do. So, um, just minor changes, it's not that big. If you are having some troubles with some of the bosses, you might want to actually uh, check this out, uh, read what's going on. This battle Spearhead of Paradise Lost, which is Ragnahim, the, three, uh, the phase 3 grab into suppression attack pattern is now an AoE attack. I can only imagine what does that mean. So basically, does he freaking KOs everyone if he is, you know, he can actually KO everyone if he gets them with the grapple hook? I don't know. It, it's kind of funny. Uh, also, Redeemer's Battles, and this is huge, so uh, we're going to be talking about Bridget here. Bridging no longer uses her suppression attack, KO attacks, right, uh, consecutively during her second and third phases, which is great, finally, because she could uh, spam the crap out of it and KO people one by one in a short periods of time, no longer. Also, you get uh, you get an indicator, so you get a, like a red pillar of light. <clears throat> if that, if it's you, you are the target for the KO, which is going to be way easier to distinguish, to figure out who she is targeting. Uh, activation range and speed more lenient for uh, Bridget's suppression attack during her second and third phases. So basically, Bridget is going to be way more uh, comfortable to fight against. So it's really good. Uh, now, battle balance revamps for normal battles. So, uh, this is basically like, you know, little battles in Donegal, Downtown Burby, Aiden, and all that. Uh, there is a lot of stuff here. Most important thing is that all these little uh, maps are going to be slightly faster to go through now, because there's going to be less transitions. Uh, some bosses receive a little bit of HP boosts, but that's about it. So, um... It's just leveling is going to be way faster, I would say, now. You're going to go through the dungeons faster, so it's good. It's really good. Battles. Now, Season 4 battle changes. Uh, the defense and attack camp for monsters in the below battles have been adjusted. So, Nile gets um, his defense and attack camp increased by 500, Ragnahim by 1000, and Siet by 1500. So, you would need more attack uh, to cap these. <clears throat> Same goes for the quick battle. The power requirement is 500, 1000, and 1500, so you would need more stats now, which is attack and defense power, for these three battles. So be advised. There is now a panel, uh, a better penalty for those who don't deal uh, one, you know, more than 7% damage in raids and 1% in normal uh, battles or RAR. You now. <clears throat> Not only get one core, you also only get one AP, and your XP and gold is earned is reduced to 20%. So, guys, please do the damage. It's pretty, pretty um, important here. <laughs> Next up, Seal Shop Revamp. Uh, this is a huge, uh, really huge, basically, uh, Dulahan stuff is being removed from the uh, seal shop. No longer can you purchase the chunks and Dulahan essences. Um, however, they are replacing them with this list of goodies right over here. First of all, uh, ample extractors. You get you can now buy legendary or destiny box, a stair essences, a stair weapon essence. So you can now build a stair stuff. Just with the seals. It's really good. You also get a plus 13 restorative enhancement rune uh, for level 100 weapon, which is a Stera, which is great. And the biggest thing here is that now you can purchase critical plus one and balance plus one element stones for power infusions. Now, this is obviously not as good as plus two infusions, but however, these are guaranteed and you only need seals for that. You don't need to gamble. So for those who are wanting to increase their balance and critical, their technique, so they can uh, participate in more battles and be stronger, this is huge. So this is amazing. Uh, this is going to be a really great, especially for new players. Uh, also, the amount of seals required for the essences for the free gear 
has been decreased and decreased a lot actually um especially for dual and a side essences by like 45 it's huge so you need less seals now uh you needed what 110 plus um yeah you need three you needed 300 seals total to get all the free accessories now you only need 200 so uh this is amazing so you're gonna get everything super fast it's really good also the guild seal shop received these uh stones so if you have some seal uh guild seals you can buy these from the guild seal shop as well so this is really great New and returning player experience revamp. So what happened here is that now you will have the icons for the rookies who are total new players. They had a gonna have a green heart and the returning mercenaries who's just coming back from from a hiatus or whatever. Uh, they're gonna have a yellow one. So now you can distinguish who is a new player, who's a returning player, and this is really this thing is really great for myself because uh, I like to help people a lot, and now I can see. Um, if players are like completely new so i can guide them i can help them and if they're returning uh, mercenaries i can help them to you know uh, better like you know understand what's going on or just remind them what's going on in the battle it's really great so uh, the tour of duty the package whenever you would return is now called long time no see so you get a lot of uh, different stuff here uh the goals for character growth has been a little Bit, it's been changed a little bit so at level 70 and 80 you get battle support packages so uh, nighthawk set and armageddon set for 70 and 80 so it's going to be a little bit easier um, on the defense for you and some attack during season two uh, which is you know it's minor convenience but it's pretty it's still pretty good um items so uh they also changed all the free gear that you should, that you, that you get before you would get righteous judgment now it's going to be emerald judgment so what was the difference between righteous and emerald righteous is focused around attack speed and attack speed doesn't contribute to your technique right so by giving the emerald enchant scroll implemented into the free gear they basically increase your critical and critical is goes towards the technique so it's going to be easier to you know to meet the Q, uh, quick battle requirements for the battles which is super super great now also the four new dismantle exclusive items can be earned from level 95 raids and this is a huge nerf to season two farming which is uh, which was the element stone farming now uh the stuff that you need to get for element stone you can only acquire in level 95 raids and they are now divided into element cloth bundle elemental accessory shard elemental weapon shard armor shard it's uh huge actually it's uh, I, I think the uh the market for the element stone is gonna crash well it's gonna crash regardless because now you have the uh stones for plus one critical and balance right for power infusion but also they changed it so i think season two is dead now like it does the the stuff doesn't drop there and the drop rates have been nerfed there so yeah guys um now if you wanna if you wanna farm some inter um, intermediate element stone you need to do level 95 raise it seems this is huge this is this is big uh, let me know in the comment section below what, what do you think about it new item body type slot so basically this removes the robe in an X <clears throat> tab uh, body slot what is it so let's imagine for a second you have uh, a regular character you know character shape right and uh you have oil applied on it you don't really want you get tired of oil right and you want to become thicker you want to have like huge thighs you could you want to be muscled up you don't really need to change uh you know your uh, original appearance right you can now actually create a new body slot so uh, you can save yourself your original appearance and then use a appearance alteration coupon to make a new body slot and in that body slot you can make yourself thick without oil or, you know change everything you want in your character shape and save it and then you can switch between them so you, today you want to be oiled so you go back to your original you just switch it back to it or today i want to be thick i want to be thick i want to do some heavy erp no problem switch to your thick uh, preset your body slot that's it this is basically how it works wardrobe update uh, added 14 clone outfit crafting boxes and this is huge for uh people who love using alts and you know uh, getting them outfits and stuff you uh, the more points you gain 
uh, wardrobe points, uh, the more extra crafting um, clone outfit boxes you're going to get. This is huge. Uh, this is amazing. So uh, make sure to um, claim them in the wardrobe. This is amazing. Also, they nerfed the amount of AP you will have to spend whenever you are uh, using some other skills on your second and you know third characters. So it's still pretty good. However, I still think that they need to make you pay your main character's AP so you can unlock other stuff on your other characters. Because my character right now, he has, uh, she has like 500,000 AP and I don't have anywhere to spend it. So please think about it, guys. Please make it happen. And other changes right here. Uh, the Magmel uh, new season is starting. New rewards, uh, everything. Uh, battle changes for uh, Bokai, uh, Crow's Gun Kai, Twin Chain Blades Greatsword, uh, Tate Silas, Grimden. It's, uh, you guys can read it right here. Um, it's nothing nothing much. Uh, the mailbox, a read all button here. Uh, you can now see the total number of mails in your mailbox. Uh, the mailbox can hold uh, um, whatever mails exceeding that can only be received when you delete the mails you already have. So basically some uh, quality of life changes to the mailbox, pretty much. And some UI and story fixes. That's about it. Nothing really uh, to talk about here. Uh, so that's about it for the uh, this update, pretty much. Oh yeah, right. Uh, there is now uh, you remember the you know the kitties, the cats in the town. You can talk to them now, and you're gonna have a story now. So you can get yourself if you're level 11 plus, you can get yourself unlimited hair pass for seven days, inner armor for seven days, and uh, an outfitter pass for seven days. So you can actually look kind of good if you're still if you're just starting playing Vindictus, which is great. It's really great. That's about it for the patch notes. It's pretty huge, and we just got through the patch notes. There's still like sales and events. So uh, we're going to quickly go through them and see what's up. Pretty good. Pretty good. This stuff here is nice. All right. So new gacha. Every month we get new gacha. This time it's classy crystal. And uh, there is a lot of new sets that we haven't gotten yet, which is great. Airtight Special Oil Curse High Cut Chick Set. Huge tit set. And also it comes with six pieces, just like uh, Bunny Babe uh, was. So you can either have a thong with tights or uh, just a skirt. So it comes with six pieces. It's really good. Uh, you can you can read it over here. Also, airtight body oil and face oil have been added to the gacha. So you can now sell them on the market and you can actually get them from the gacha, which is great. Uh, airtight special oil curves potato mode. I'm just, I'm not big of a fan of that set, okay? Like, don't get me wrong. It's still, it's cool. I'm just not a fan, right? The Cobbit set and all that hype. Bleh, I don't know. But it's just the name is, the name actually is quite fitting. So the oil curse set is now available, the Cobbit one with a funny name. Uh, Airtight Special Brilliant Loose Set is coming back. Uh, if you want to have huge shoulder pads around and look quite royally, um, this set is for you. It's for males. Um, uh, cyber uh, outfits have been added. These are new ones. Cyber Wolf for males looks really sick. And Airtight Special Cyber Cat Set for females looks pretty awesome. Uh, gotta love the ears. It's really cool. And the special Peacock Set and Peacock Wings uh, are returning. It's a pretty cute set. It's pretty nice. The probability is there, uh, as always. So... Um, Please enjoy, um, if you're going to be uh, wailing on this gacha, I wish you good luck. And uh, hopefully these sets are going to be uh, quite cheap, I would say. I mean, this this should be cheap, because there's not, there's not much on it. Like, come on, what the hell. That's about it for the uh, gacha. March Avatar Shop update, and uh, there's nothing here. Only Siet's ponytail. So if you ever saw how Siet uh, looks, she has an awesome, very long ponytail. Now that is available for females. So uh, grab that Siet ponytail. It's really awesome. It's really good. And the events. So there is not a lot of events, actually, but uh, they're still quite huge. Now, first one is Returned uh, Royal Army Record Supplies event. Basically, uh, just do the raids. Uh, you can earn two different boxes. So whenever you do bosses from Dulahan to Eternal Alculus, you gain uh, Supply Box 1. And from Maka to Aiden, you get Supply Box two you can earn them up to 10 each week so 20 total and uh, you open them up you open these boxes after completing the uh, the raids uh, you at random get um 
this stuff here. Oh, actually, open to claim all contents. Wait, so you, you get everything from each box, really? That's quite generous, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. This is actually freaking generous. Wow. Okay. Okay, and one of its other contents. Okay, so I guess I guess uh, it's the supply box two that is like random uh, while opening. The first one is like you get everything. The second one you get just at random some of the stuff here. I guess that's how it is. And also exchange shop for it, so um, you can get some departure boost, the Star Essence box, Damascus Steel. Obviously, always departure licenses, fatigue braces, everything you need to you know to have in regular Vindictus life and activities. Really nice event, just to just spam the raids, get the boxes, open them up, collect the tickets, and exchange the tickets into the exchange shop. That's it. Simple as that. And a spring celebration weekend, which is a hot time event, so every weekend and holidays we're going to have double AP, double experience, uh, expertise proficiency, and a bonus evil core, so extra drop from all the raids from March 16th to April 6th. So uh, this is really good, so uh, make sure you come uh, during weekends and holidays and spend it uh, to get some extra drops and stuff. And they also did, uh, finally, there was a law in KR, and uh, they forced all the companies to finally show the probability rates in their games. And a lot of people speculated for years what are the enhancement rates exactly are. And whenever they started, ever since the plus 15 to plus 20 has been introduced, people have been speculating, what's the percentage for armors and weapons whenever you enhance them? Yeah, so people thought that it was 15% to go from 15 to 16. And you know what? Mm -mm. Nope. 15 to 16. That's right. 5%. That's why you can score plus 16, or, you know, some people are really lucky to score that. It's only 5 freaking percent. And then it goes down for each level by one. So 4%, 3%, 2%. It's ridiculous. Like, I mean, it kind of makes sense since, you know, they don't want you to reach higher enhancement because the amount of additional damage that you're going to be getting is going to be huge and you're going to break the game but i mean come on man five percent really that's just that sucks dude that sucks uh nuts i don't know and also they explain the bonus evil core drop rates how it works so basically uh how much luck you have how many uh cores you're going to be getting and what are the chances you're going to uh, obtain extra cores here so uh just read it it's not that big of a deal just explains how it works same for the blessing stone effects i want a probability rates for the drops i want the full drop table for enchant scrolls and for bosses accessories so it's like Selrin essence palala essence what are the chances they are dropping because these are ridiculously low i wish i really wish that they're gonna enforce the law even further and make um the companies um Nexon in particular, to release a uh, full drop table for all the scrolls, all the drops from the bosses. What is the percentage for the drops? Uh, that would be great. And one last thing, and it's huge. It's probably one of the best things that happens. Checkered flag check-in event is coming back. The third one is now here. Uh, basic event, we're going to have a separate video covering it. I'm going to make it again, uh, just like how I did for the second check-in. Uh, basically, you log in every day, you claim your rewards, and there is a lot of stuff here. Uh, just you, you get everything for free. You get everything for free, and there is a gazillion of stuff here, like the partial licenses, outfit, uh, dyes, uh, material boxes, worm boxes, everything. It just it's fatigue, AP, ruins everything you want. And the grand prizes here... Basically, uh, just like in every check-in, uh, at 54 check-ins, we get uh, some butterfly wings, then we get the um, like uh, premium pets, then we get a uh, bear, Nemain's bear object, which is cute, uh, tails, uh, primal flame weapons uh, of choice, and then the outfits, the grand outfit is, this time, is bunny babe, the regular one. There's also Foxy Desperado, uh, Gangster Set, uh, and um, Legionnaire, Pitcher, uh, Rockstar. So it's just log in, get everything, and whenever you just completed this whole calendar of stuffs, you're going to receive the outfit as a grand prize here. So it's huge, it's uh, coming back, but we're going to 
talk about it more in depth in a separate video, like how you use the chances, how you uh, how the missing days uh, work, and so on. So, guys, make sure you keep on logging. It's gonna last for 119 days, so four months. And uh, this is basically uh, became a tradition at this point because. Um, uh, there was a first check uh, gremlin check-in event uh, right before Le Leather, and then there was uh, the second one right before Kale. So I guess um, somewhere in between or at the end, we're going to receive Tessa, which is the next character. That's about it for the events, and from the updates, let's get to the conclusion. And so this is pretty much it covering today's patch. It's huge, there's a lot of things there. Uh, please let me know. Um, and uh, just to uh, ask your questions uh, if you didn't understand something uh, in the patch notes there was a lot of information there but i think we covered uh, most of the uh, the most important stuff there uh, sadly there's no extra content here but um all the changes and a lot of changes for the new players that are beneficial for the new players and it's really exciting it's really good thank you so much for watching this was legend arma tv Guys, there's going to be more videos, uh, maybe even today, I'm going to release it a little bit later. Uh, there's going to be at least uh, one for the check-in event, so we're going to talk about it a little bit more in-depth. Uh, there's also going to be a, a Spell Sword Orisha update, because there are some things that are like really game-changing for the Orisha, making her a little bit different. Uh, so it, it's worth mentioning, so there's going to be at least two more videos, and we're going to continue the other videos I know. Uh, I've been working on enchanting video, and there's also going to be a power infusion, and I was actually waiting for this power infusion stones to appear, and this is going to be really great to cover in the power infusion video. Subscribe to YouTube channel, uh, thanks again for watching, uh, join my Discord, uh, hit the like. Uh, it's it's amazing. Like, this update is really great. Uh, new gacha, new... Uh, the rebalance. So, um, please enjoy that, and I see you very, very soon.